Hello, I'm Representative Jonathan Brostoff, and I wanted to give you another quick update on a piece of anti-consumer legislation that's pending before the Assembly. Here we go again. Another week, another attack on licensed professionals. For our first floor period in 2020, we are set to vote yet again on what's known as a zombie bill, AB 76. Now this is a short-sighted, anti-worker, anti-consumer bill that Republican politicians are trying to force on Wisconsin again. Now keep in mind, this is after the governor initially struck it down. In short, AB 76 would cut the required number of training hours for nursing assistants from 120 with 32 required clinical hours down to 75 with only 16 required clinical hours. Now, proponents of this bill want you to believe that this change is just common sense. After all, federal requirements for CNA training follow the 75-16 clinical hour formula, and some of our neighboring states have actually modeled their requirements after these federal uh, guidelines. And at a time when we're facing shortages of CNAs in Wisconsin, doesn't it make sense that we should lower the bar and try and attract more people to this important field? The answer is a resounding no. First off, the federal guidelines for CNA training were set over 30 years ago, back in 1987. Since then, many other states and organizations have actually pushed for increased CNA training hours. Over half the states in our country currently require more than the 75-hour federal training requirement, and the National Academy of Medicine started advocating for a 120-hour minimum federal standard all the way back in 2008. Additionally, since 1987, the role of CNAs has changed significantly in our society, and so too has our understanding of the needs of patients in nursing care. In the years since then, we've made huge advances in our understanding of Alzheimer's, dementia care, behavioral health and disability care, uh, palliative care, patients' rights, and we regularly task CNAs with caring for our most vulnerable citizens and have them uh, needing to show a pretty deep understanding of all of these topics while acting not only as a personal care worker, but also as companions and sources of comfort for these individuals who find themselves in this sort of nursing care. Now put yourself in the shoes of a CNA and think about all those responsibilities. And this zombie bill is trying to cut their training down to less than two weeks? They want to cut the clinical hours in half? That change would make it harder to feel like you're well-equipped, supported, and ready to provide critical, life-sustaining cares to numerous individuals in these incredibly vulnerable positions. Now that brings me to my second reason why this bill is bad policy. We are currently seeing high levels of turnover among credentialed CNAs and fewer and fewer individuals that want to pursue careers as CNAs, and that often comes down to some important questions. Do they feel well-equipped and supported and ready to go at their jobs to the best of their abilities? All too often the answer is no. CNAs are grossly underpaid and undersupported for the crucial role they serve, making on average only $19,000 per year. At the same time, CNAs fa face understaffing, irregular hours, limited support, and yes, inadequate training for many of the tasks that they are regularly asked to perform. Unsurprisingly, this is translated to a 50% year-to-year turnover among CNAs. Instead of Pursuing a lower-the-bar approach, which has clearly failed both our workers and consumers, I am committed to a raise-the-floor approach instead that would make CNA training accessible and attractive to new workers, properly support and compensate those people who have chosen to train as CNAs, and invest in a nursing model that puts workers and patients first. To that end, earlier this year, along with my friend and representative uh, Lisa Subek, I introduced three bills that were uh, Assembly Bill 253, 254, and 255 in order to raise the floor and raise the pay for new and continuing CNAs. These bills would create a new tax credit to offset the training cost for aspiring CNAs. 
provide grants to Wisconsin technical colleges in order to expand access to CNA training programs, which we are in severe need of right now, and finally, to both expand Medicaid in Wisconsin and specifically to use those critical federal dollars to directly increase reimbursements for these personal care workers. Together, these three bills would support CNAs in Wisconsin, both aspiring and current, and would help give this critical profession and the professionals who represent it the dignity and compensation they so clearly deserve. As I mentioned previously, this isn't the first time we've fended off AB 76. Last year, this bill made it through the Assembly and the Senate on the back of the Republicans' gerrymandered majorities before, thankfully, being vetoed by Governor Tony Evers. Now, we finally have a governor who recognizes the damage that this sort of bill would do to the CNA profession and to the health and well-being of many of our most vulnerable citizens. I am proud that we have a governor who has our backs and exercise his veto power, and I'll be proud to vote down this damaging bill and to uh, fight against the veto override attempt when it comes to the floor. Thank you so much for your time. As always, I promise to keep fighting for what's right. Have a great day.